Hey guys, today we're going to be working on funky fingerstyle comping techniques. Now this is basically funk rhythm played with your fingers instead of, you know, always strummed attack. So today we're going to be covering the basics. This is part one of a two-part lesson. We're going to be covering the 16th note rhythm, the right hand technique, and adding the backbeat. And coming up in part two, we're going to add the funk. We're going to add bass lines and ghost notes and everything to kind of bring it together. As always, you can get the free tab for this lesson by subscribing on the bottom of the homepage at tastyguitar.com and check out membership at Tasty Guitar where you get interactive sound slice tab, backing tracks, feedback on your playing for me, live workshops, and so much more. Tune up and let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. The most important thing to be able to pull off these 16th note rhythms finger style is the right hand. So there are a couple different ways you could approach the right hand technique. Now, most of the time, I'm gonna be playing three note chord voicings when I'm doing this stuff. It's not like I'm playing big bar chords. Okay, so let's take, say, the A minor seven chord down here at the fifth fret. Okay, now, if I were just playing that without the bass note, most of the time, I would use my index, middle, and ring finger together to get the chord. Okay, so something like this. Keep these fingers like almost glued together. And looking more at a side view here, you can see it's a very short and sharp pull on the strings. I'm not over exaggerated it, bring it all the way out here. It's very short and sharp attack. Now the other way to do this is with your thumb, index, and middle finger getting the chord. Something like this style. Now that will allow you to kind of pick out notes individually like usually with the thumb and then the index and middle finger. So I'm doing that A minor seven down there. And I can do some funky stuff like that. So either way, either three fingers kind of glued together like a claw or the thumb, index, and middle. Next, you gotta make sure that you can play 16th note rhythms with this finger style technique with impeccable timing. So what I suggest you do here is work with a metronome. Now I'm gonna demonstrate this starting off hitting every 16th note within a measure, and then I'm gradually going to go through a bunch of different rhythms, leaving out 16th notes and putting rests instead. So here I'm gonna demonstrate this at 70 BPM. If you have trouble keeping up, go ahead and play it at a lower uh, speed. All right, first we're gonna play every 16th note. Again, this is at 70 BPM here. Like I said before, if you have trouble keeping up, go ahead and play this at a slower tempo. Here we go. One, two, three, four. See how small my motion is? It's really important to keep those fingers really glued together. Starting to feel the burn here. Now I'll go ahead and try to do that with the thumb, index, and middle finger. You might find it a little bit easier. Now what we're going to do is we're going to miss the second 16th note of each beat. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to miss the third 16th note of each beat. One, two, three, four. Next, we're going to play just the first and last 16th note of each beat, missing that second and third. Three, four. Now 
Now, if you find yourself getting out of time, either behind the beat or speeding up and getting ahead of the beat, what I suggest you do here is replace the rest with dead ghost notes just by hitting dead strings. Here's what that's gonna sound like. All right, next we're gonna be missing the first and third 16th notes of a B. We'll go one, two, three, four. Next, we're just going to be missing the first 16th note of each beat. Now, this rhythm is very important because a lot of times you want to put a bass note right on that downbeat. Here we go. One, two, three, four. And lastly here, we're just going to be playing the last 16th note of each beat. Three, four. Now a lot of times this one is very tricky for people. So again, what I suggest you do is go ahead and play ghost notes instead of those rests if you find yourself getting out of time. Three, four. All right, the next part is very important, especially if you're playing solo without a drummer, and that is kind of adding a backbeat slap on beats two and four to kind of mimic where the snare drum will be. Okay, now most of the time I accomplish this just kind of bringing my hand down on the strings like this and hitting dead strings. So that would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's take a look at a side view here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now another thing to mention here is most of the time when I'm doing that backbeat slap, I'm trying to bring the fingers down underneath the strings where I'm gonna play my chord. So right there, if I intend to play a chord with the D, G, and B strings, I'm gonna to try to bring the slap down right underneath those strings with my fingers so I can immediately play the chord. Now let's just take one of those rhythms that we did earlier and add the backbeat. So here we go, one, two, three, four. Now that doesn't sound like much on its own, but if we had a bass line going on underneath, let's see what that would sound like. One, two, three, four. Next, try to combine some of the different rudiments that we did earlier, change up the chords, but still try to keep that backbeat established. Go one, two, three, four. So those are the basics of this style. Make sure you practice this stuff slowly with the metronome, making sure that you can play that 16th note rhythm in time and that backbeat established on two and four. Now coming up in part two, we're gonna add the funk. We're gonna put some bass lines together with this stuff, some ghost notes to add some really nice feel. I'll see you then.